Drop it! Welcome back to Flat's Movies and Pop Culture 13. We discuss all movies. I'm your host, Kyle Curse Flat. Today, I'm finally going to rank Ty West's X trilogy. I'm a huge fan of this trilogy. And what was so impressive, they were able to bring out all this whole trilogy in a small amount of time, especially releasing X and Pro in the same year of 2022, so many months from each other. And then, of course, Maxine was released this summer in July. And what brings this trilogy together is Ty West's direction and Emilia Goff's performance throughout all three movies. I love that this um, this trilogy pays homage to the classic horror films that we love from the 70s and the 80s. And then, of course, it takes a little vibe from the 20s and the 30s um, with Pearl, um, especially... Wizard of Oz. Um, I do love. I do love this trilogy, and I and I'm happy that I'm finally going to rank this trilogy. With that being said, let's get this. Because number three was Maxine, the final of the trilogy. Um, I love the '80s vibe that was going on there. I love the score, the soundtrack that played throughout. Uh, Mia Goth did an awesome performance as Maxine. She she continued her character from 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 X for the events of X, and she's just trying to move on um, and become an actress. Um, and um, popular actress, and then, of course, I I think I love the character, especially the sporting characters like Kevin Bacon. I thought Kevin Bacon stole the show, especially the amount of time that he was in. Um, I thought that was a class to chase when he chased after Maxine. I thought that was very very well done. Um, th- this movie does not my favorite ending of the trilogy. It's not my favorite ending of the trilogy. Um, it is a bonkers ending, especially with the actresses and all that actresses and all that stuff. Um, to me, I was disappointed. With the reveal of who was dealing the killing throughout the whole movie, um, it revealed that it was her dad this whole entire time. I was actually disappointed, um, that it w- w- the reveal of who it was. I thought it was going to be something, something very special going on, but then it just ended up being a, a trope I have seen before in horror films. Um, but I do, I do think, um, I do like the final scene where you know she after after all the events that happened in the final act. Um, she you knows she's living her life as a popular actress. And I love that the final shot, it shows her practical head on the bed. And of course it plays Betty Davis eyes with the credits. I thought that was a perfect way to end the movie, but it was a blast. I thought I really enjoyed. There was some good scores. And I love the fact there was some, a lot of Easter eggs in here with the cycle house. I love, I love how the cycle wasn't overused. It was used properly and it, and it really matched the story they were trying to tell with Maxine. Um, and I, I think the performances in were great. It's just that, that the final act kind of fell flat for me. But but it was a bonkers ending. I mean, I like how I did appreciate that it took a left turn. It wasn't the ending that you were expecting. But like I said, the reveal of who was actually doing the killing was just definitely disappointing. But I thought the score, it, it really showed you what Hollywood was in the 80s and that, that those vibes. Um, like there was a bones cruncher scene where she crushed someone's balls on balls onto the in the film. Um but no, Maxine was still a fun time. Um, it's just that it's definitely ended not the way I wanted wanted it to go. But it still was a fun time for sure. And and Mia Goth did an awesome performance as Maxine throughout. So coming up number two is Pearl. I think this is definitely uh, my favorite performance of Mia Goth. Um, this this you know she's she's playing a young Pearl. Um, you know, she's living with her mom, dad. She's a, her, she's, you know, she's married, but her husband's at the war. Her Howard, her husband Howard's on, is out, out in the war right now in the army. Um, and she's got to deal with, you know, being alone and her sexual urges at the same time, poor scarecrow. Um, but then she's also trying to deal with her parents, her, her especially with her dad is ill, who can't really move. And with her mother, who's just telling her what to do. And uh, she has arguments, um, and then she's trying to, you know, become, you know, something as well. And then she also loses a part from her cousin. And of course, she gives one of the best monologues in the movie and in, in the horror film that I haven't seen in a very, very long time. And this is all this was almost like 
this five helmets, the way Pearl was dressed, it was almost like um, Wizard of Oz if Dorothy lost it and went nuts. And it was like it was like Wizard of Oz meet Texas Chainsaw. Um, but I thought Pearl was just of an incredible film. I really enjoyed Pearl. I thought her performance would made the movie. And of course, that camera shot, remember after the whole monologue she was telling. And then she just, um, I think not cousin or sister in law. Um, but it goes out the, that camera shot when her, she's running away. And then, of course, Pearl gra- just slowly walks out of the house, grabs the axe, and chases her down the road, and then finally kills her. <laughs> Um, and, and then, of course, she, there, there was a scene where she tried to put her dad with the alligators, but th- that didn't help. Didn't happen. And then she um, ended up um, her, killing her dad and killing her mom. And then, of course, um, it really felt like at the end when when Howard comes home, it was almost like those Friday 13 vibes with uh, Pamela. That's how uh, Mr. Voorhees would walk and how Pamela was holding the head. But that's what it felt like. And then I like the technique that Ty West was using throughout the movie, and and I just like I like the setting that using that that farmhouse that they live on. It was very cool. Um, like I said, I, I think it's her, it's her performance to keep you engaged. Mia Goff keeps you engaged throughout the whole movie, and I thought it was an awesome performance. And give Pearl a little more background, um, and what Howard and and her were doing when they were younger. So that was very cool. I like Pearl was a lot of fun. And now I, I had a blast with Pearl. So coming at number one is what started the whole trilogy X. Um, you know, it pays homage to those horror films and especially in the, in the 70s, where, you know, with especially Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, these group of people who are living in the 70s, they want to make their own adult film. And they try to, you know, they, they rent this, they go to this house that, you know, that's this house that's set, that's crossed from Howard and Pearl. You can only you know, have these older version of Pearl. I love how Mia Goff plays the double role. She's playing Maxine in this, and she's always playing the older version of Pearl throughout. And I love, and I and you know also got Jenner Ortega, Jenner Ortega in here right now, who's who's ha- who's having a hot streak right now. You know, playing him from the Scream movies to Wednesday, uh, from being in here, and then of course Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Um, she's on a roll right now, and of course you got Brittany Snow, who was in Prom Night uh, remake. Um, from 15 years ago no no 16 years ago it was in 2008 but no but x was cool i thought the kills were awesome i thought the kills were awesome um i like i said the performance screens and i also i love the ending when it was maxine standing uh, maxine standing off with pearl and then of course pearl has the shotgun but then but then then the back spies her she flies out of the house um and I love, I love the, like I love the setting. It really paid homage to the Sammies in those movies, and and what Ty West it really kicked off the trilogy. I still, I love this whole trilogy. But don't, but what X? I love the ending, and then of course just Pearl dies, and Maxine moves on with the advance of Maxine. But I really enjoyed X. X was just a phenomenal film, and it, it was. I had no expectations because it, it was just a movie that just came out of nowhere. I just heard it was just Ty West directing. I knew nothing about it. I liked like the gene. So I stay away from marketing and spoilers. But when I finally watched it, I was, I was, I had a blast with it. And then I didn't know what I was getting into, but it was a lot of fun. Um, like I said, this whole trilogy, it was a blast. And it's one of my favorite horror trilogies in recent years. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, each, each movie has its own vibe going on there. But I love how, you know, especially with X and Pearl are connected, but then Chris Maxine continues for Max. But like X was a lot of fun. And the writing and the directing, the whole cast performance throughout this whole trilogy was a lot of fun. So yeah. So my number one is X. Um, I said it was amazing. So um this was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed watching all three films. And it's a and I thought I finally come on here and rank these films. I know I'm a little late, folks, but I finally wanted to rank this. Finally got the the goal to rank this trilogy. So, especially with Maxine coming on uh, Physical Media soon. So, all right, guys, let us comment below what you think about the X trilogy. I'd like to know your guys' ranking. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and subscribe to content like this. This Saturday, I'm bringing on Mika and Kira from the Double Feature podcast we'll be discussing leading and supporting characters in horror and then this sunday um i'm bringing on shea from shea rants and sip and ice we'll be discussing our top 30 80s horror so that's gonna be a blast and stay tuned for all the amazing stuff i got the rest for september and coming into october i got awesome stuff i'm working on and lost a couple of interviews i'm working on stay tuned for that um and i'm at you know 581 subscribers i'm almost at 600 um so thank you everyone that has subscribed and supported my channel um I'm getting close to 600 and 
and on my way to a thousand subscribers and thank you everyone who supported me I to keep my passion going i love i love talking movies with you guys and everyone who comes to my live chats you guys are awesome so with that being said thank you for watching hope an amazing wonderful day we'll see everyone bye everyone